you ask yourself, what would it be like to commit war crimes in a medieval Scottish setting? But RimWorld just won't let you. Well, today, we have a new colony sim that thanks to Hooded Horse, we're going to go through and show you how to play it. Hello, friends, and welcome. Today, we are playing Clan Folk. In this video, we're going to go through the basics of the game so that you get a head start in committing all those war crimes and get the, uh, the mundane stuff out of the way. Now, before we jump into that, I do want to address the elephant in the room. Uh, my beard looks slightly different here. I went to a barber and we discussed cutting off this much and they cut off that much. <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate. I'm going to be growing it back. The length will be back, but uh, I did want to address that. I am not happy about it, but uh, we will move on. It still looks pretty good. It's just not the same beautiful length that it was before. I was a bit disappointed with that. So you're going to have to wait for the long beard to come back, unfortunately. But let's jump right into the game. Clanfolk is a colony sim set in the medieval Scottish Highlands. Clear the land, build a home, hunt fish, gather craft, have children, marry them off, raise livestock, farm, meet the neighbors, hire, trade, run an inn, prepare for the winter, and build your home or die trying. And of course, I assume that this will turn into some sort of war crime simulator, like all colony life sims end up in the end. Today, we're going to go through and we're going to do a quick introduction to your first few days within the game. Of course, they have a great tutorial system in here. I highly recommend going through this, but this will give you a kickstart into the game. As you can see up in the top right hand corner here, this is an early access game. So if there are any bugs, definitely they are part of the enjoyment of any early access game. Send them up to the good folks at uh, Minimax Games and have fun abusing all those sweet exploits you can do in the early access. And of course, if you are interested in this game, it is available on Steam as of yesterday. When you go to create a new world, you'll have a very interesting point-based systems where you get to add and remove different features. That way you can guide the world to either have more lakes, slightly less mountains, more forests, less grassland, and a ton of wildlife. And of course you have your seed that you can change so that you can follow along on your favorite creator. Once you create your map, you will have a preview of what it will look like. You can continue with it, or you can generate a new world map. And if you like everything that you see, you can go through and build your clan. Now, there are a few different starts that you can have that have different difficulty. You can also have a custom start. But for this, we are going to start with the fresh start and for this game. Here, you can go through and you can build up your clan. And we're going to check off tutorials for this game. But I, as I recommended, you should actually start them. In this game, as you're going to notice here, you have a family tree and a dynasty, a clan that you're building throughout the game. All right, the first thing that we're going to need is we are going to need to take care of our basic needs. We have seven people and we're going to need seven beds for them. We are also going to need some place for them to get water and some place for them to wash up. No one likes a stinky clansman. Okay, so at the bottom left-hand corner here, this is where you're going to be doing most of your interacting throughout the game with the build system. So we have the ability to build uh, different buildings, objects, or send our workers on jobs. Inventory we'll touch on a bit later. Ideas is the research tree, the skills, your family tree, and your clans. On the right hand corner here are your different alerts and needs that your people are going to have. The top at the top left is your inventory. And then over here is your speed. You also have different overlays that you can activate here at the top right hand corner. 
and you can turn off some turn on and off some of your automation down at the bottom right hand corner here so the great thing is is we need beds but we don't need actual beds we just need sleeping zones so we have these sleeping zones here and we can just start placing seven of them down there we go that is all you need to do to get your initial uh sleeping zone we are going to click on it and we'll get this little information section here as you can see we it's already built there is no requirements to build it and the condition is full so that means it's ready to go next up we are going to come into objects and under objects we are going to click on basic needs and this is where we'll find our drink zone and our wash zone these need to go on the shorelines i don't know if you should have these next to each other but i assume that you should not so i like putting our drink zones close to where our people are sleeping and i like keeping our wash zones a bit away and as you can see here, there is a highlighting system. If you can't place it there, like you can't have a wash zone in the middle of the lake, we need it on the corner. So it will let us know as soon as we find a appropriate place to put it. There we go. Unfortunately, it looks like the reeds are blocking us there. Next up, it's going to tell us that we need some branches and we need some stones, but it's not going to tell us why we need those because we're not building anything. Everything here is already done. We don't need to worry about it. So why do we need these sticks and stones? Well, the research in this game is very interesting. And if we look here, in order to build a gravel floor, we need to first collect 100 stones, and then this will unlock the ability to build a gravel floor. So let's go into our job section here and we are going to gather stones and they're all over the place over here so why don't we just go like that and click on there and that one's going to disappear now for branches well we'll just come in here and we'll click on gather branches and then we'll just highlight some trees and boom we have branches coming in now it is time for us to unpause and let the game go but it didn't tell us to gather something our people need to eat well let's correct that let's go and tell them to gather berries because we want our people to be able to eat and not starve before we even get started next up we need a place where we can actually craft the basic objects in the game the basic tools that we would like to be able to do more jobs oh and as you can see we are getting some unlocks as our clan is going through and harvesting those branches and stone so let's quickly go and build ourselves a work zone so what we're going to do is we are going to click on objects and then we're going to go to crafting and get ourselves a work zone we'll just throw it over here right now that's good enough place now unlike the beds this zone actually requires stones and branches to be completed we're just going to speed it up here during the day when your workers are active there you will have the regular 1x speed the 2x and 4x as soon as everyone is asleep you will have the ability to switch this for or this will automatically switch from 4x to 12x but if one person is awake that will not occur all right next up we will go into here and this is our crafting menu here and oh my god it's complicated actually once you look at it it isn't that complicated you have your basic building so if we want to click and build one we can do that if we don't want to do one just clicking on it a left click again will cancel it anything with the gear icon we can automate two and that means it will keep an inventory of two now, one other way that you can do this is rather than going through the crafting bench, you can click on the inventory here, click on the category that you would like, like the tools here, and then you'll get the same menu. And this is how you can just go into this, and this is easier than going and finding the crafting bench that you're looking for. This way you're going and looking for the object that you're looking for. The other thing we have is we have the ability to repeat. So what we can do is say we would like to build one stone sickle every single day. We can click one, click wait to tomorrow, 
and then we can repeat the build queue. And that means that every day it'll go through and it'll build a stone sickle and then it'll wait till the next day. Then next day it'll build a stone sickle and wait till the next day. Now, of course, if you just put a stone sickle in here and you hit repeat, it would just keep on building forever and waste all of your supplies. For tools, I like to keep them automated and just keep the supply at whatever I would like. Two is a good default number for the beginning of the game. The next thing while we wait for those to be built is we should set up some zones to actually store our food and store supplies. We're going to go like that. That They will automatically harvest the grass here. And we are going to go into our stockpiles and click on ingredients. All right. Speaking of harvesting grass, if we come in here and we click on clear grass, we can do two things. We can either harvest the grass, which is going to give us thresher, or we can harvest the reeds, and that is going to give us straw. All right. Next up, we are going to great straw which is going to move us towards building our first building and as a side effect we are also going to be able to produce seeds because we're going to need a plentiful harvest to make sure that we do not strip mine the entire world of all the organic material all right so what we're going to do is we're going to click on objects and then in here we're going to click on farming and we're going to click on thresher and for right now we are going to put it over here all right so we're just waiting for some branches here and do we have enough branches? Yes, we have 34 branches. All right, now we can come into here and we have some stuff that we can do. We have black seed, we have hay seed, and that's going to require hay. This is going to require flax. And we can then take our flax, turn it into flax stems, and we can take our hay and turn it into straw. As you can see, we have hay and straw currently. We do not have any of the flax stems. So what we're going to do, what I like doing here is setting up some automation. So we'll set up 10 of those. And oh, when you come in here, right click will get you out of here. I'm constantly clicking on the left click and then I remember that it's right click. Okay, 10 of each of those. We'll do 50 of these and 50 of these. I have... I have found that 50 is in the early game is good quantity for the automation of your straw and flex and some of your other materials that you need. Uh, I, I started off at 25 and I just felt like I was constantly running out. 50 is a better number. Okay, now we need a way to feed our people in a more automated way. And that is where the eel traps are going to come in. What we're going to do is come down to objects again, click on hunting, and get our eel traps. Now, these are going to be a bit different. I can't place them in the corners here. They're going to need to be in the side. But what I can do is I can build them right here. Now, eel traps are a bit interesting. If you have too many of them in a lake, then you will over over farm the lake of those eels and you won't be able to and you'll basically exhaust the entire supply and they won't produce anymore so be very careful on how many eel traps you have on each lake okay so what you do to try to prevent over farming is you can come in here and add to click your wait till tomorrow and then automate it so your people will come through they will harvest 10 and then wait to tomorrow that way you're not over farming your eels so early but we can't eat raw eels so we are going to go through and do our cooking fire now one thing i haven't gone through yet is you can actually click on these and it will open up the applicable location so objects food for this one a little bit of a shortcut now with fires it is very important where you place your fires if i place my fires here it is going to this red circle is going to be where sparks can land and it will start a forest fire. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start it somewhere where it's not going to cause issues. So right here would be a great location. Now, this little blue circle here is where your clan members are going to actually work from. Yeah, and we need some threshers, so we're going to do that. Let's get our threat, harvest some grass over here. 
Okay, and we have some tools unlocking. We have a stone hoe. That means that we are going to be able to farm soon. Now, one thing that I do note is down here at the bottom on the left is your task list. I find at the beginning of the game, try to keep this at or around or below the 100 tasks mark. Otherwise, they won't be able to, to complete them all in a single day. Okay, so this is an, uh, the a, an example of how we would use inventory. Rather than coming over to the crafting area, what we will go in here and we'll just automate the stone hose. Nope, not three, two. There we go. Now, one thing to note when you gather branches over trees, as you can see, we aren't getting any more branches for those trees. So you're only able to gather branches from those trees once. I don't know if they replenish. I, after playing another game through uh, approximately 15 days, I did not see replenishment on any of the uh, any of the branches. So I do not believe they replenish. However, over a longer period of time, they may be replenishing. Now, while we wait for our family to sleep here, we will go through a couple other things here. And in, you have your skill section here where you can set the priority for jobs. You also have the ability whenever you are on building something or you're within a crafting zone to set the priority for that crafting zone. And if you click on this little box here, it'll immediately set them that to a critical job that they'll do right away. Here is your family tree. So if you'd like to know what's going on with your family tree and what your current tasks are, you can look at it here. I haven't used this menu that much to tell you the truth. And you have your clans menu here, which right now we have four unknown clans. These are your fellow clans in the game and what your relation is with them. It'll also tell you what resources they tend to trade. And now that we have a hoe, we have the ability to actually start farming. All right, next up, we are going to look at planting some uh, crops. Now, you don't have to till the, the soil all the time for your different crops. However, tilled soil will give you a productivity boost. So when you go to plant your crops, they will get a 50% boost to their yield. Now, by tilling the land, you're also going to slow down your workers over it by 33%. So that is something to keep in mind, is that your workers will be slower uh, if you over-till the land. All right, next up, we finally, finally are able to do stone axes. So let's get in here quickly, get those going. And I see we also have twine. I'm going to set the automation for that. For now, I'm going to set it to 10 just until we figure out what we need. And we finally also get to start harvesting clay. Clay is available on the corners of the, the shores here. So right here in this little mud area, you're going to be able to harvest your clay. Now, one thing that I, it seems that the clay is replenishing over time. Uh, so over, after a couple days, I did notice that I was able to re-harvest the same area. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. One of our basic needs. It's time for one of our basic needs. It is time to let our people poop. All right. So under basic needs, we got a couple a couple things here. We have a added here. We have a sleep mat, sleeping mat. We have ourselves a poop hole. And standing torches. This actually just came in yesterday. This wasn't available two days ago when I first played through. And a wall torch. So what we're going to do first is we are going to set up our poop hole. I like to keep these away. Now, the people don't seem to like people, other people watching them poop. That is obvious, Mr. Scott. What we should do is we should put some space in between them. And that way, once we unlock walls, we can go in and we could build some walls. Unfortunately, we don't have any walls unlocked. Let's go take a quick look at our idea. Okay, we need to harvest 110 more branches before we get those walls unlocked. So... Let's get in there and let's get some privacy for our people. And now that we have an axe, we have the ability to clear trees, clear bushes, and clear stumps. So you're going to see these trees that have been sitting here with X's on them clear. Uh, so these ideas are critical because you won't have access to all the jobs and all the stuff that you would expect to right off the bat without unlocking them. 
All right, we have the ability to create walls. Yes, that's all we wanted. So we have a few walls that we've unlocked here. We have the hay wall, the waddle wall, the waddle fence, and the drive stone fence. Now, of course, the fences will not be good for privacy. So we either look at the waddle wall, which requires branches, or we have the hay wall, which requires straw. We don't have much straw, but we should have a lot of branches, 167. So let's start with the branch wall and see if that gives us the privacy we're looking for. Okay, so we come in here. We can also do a straw door and we will put that here. It automatically rotates for the appropriate location. And we should also look at getting a window. So let's head into our ideas and where's the window? Because right now they're going to have no light coming in. Okay, so straw window is going to require us to build a straw door. As soon as we finish building a straw door, then we are going to be able to, uh, we're going to be able to uh, build that straw window. Now that we have our first, our first till land, we can come here, put down our grass, and next up we will put our reeds. Now we can't put our reeds over here, so I actually made a mistake creating the second one. The reeds actually only can go around the lakes, so we can repopulate the lakes. So we'll just go here and tell them to plant a whole bunch. Now, of course, our task list is getting kind of full here, so we're going to want to be careful. Oh, it looks like we are making excellent progress down here on our doors. Let's see, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for two branches. Oh, we got plenty of those. And we are waiting for straw on that one. I believe they're bringing it. Yep, that's all 25. So we're just waiting for the branches, and then we can get a door. You'll notice that this... Oh, actually, we don't need a window because we, we don't have a roof on here. If we had a roof on here, you would need the... Uh, you would see this get dark right away. But because we don't have a roof, we don't actually need a window. Honestly, it's better if we don't have a window in our toilet. People freak out about that when you put windows in their toilets. I'm not sure why, but it is something... A little privacy, please. And of course, if you are enjoying this video, please feel free to go down and hit a like button. So definitely hit that like button and it will send me a strong message that you want to see more of clan folk. While you're down there, if you're not subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you're this far into the video, you are extremely awesome. Head down into the comments and let me know that you made it this far into the video and what you think about this game. Next up, we have another tool that's become available, and that is our stone pick. So let's get in there and let's automate two of them, and that's going to allow us to start mining. And we have a problem. Our people are starving. We have zero days worth of food. So that is not ideal. Let us quickly correct that egregious mistake. I'm already committing war crimes. Already failing to feed my people. Now we can, of course, gather berries one thing i haven't done is we can gather mushrooms as well let's go through and gather some mushrooms for our people oh we had a starving symbol here as well let's get ourselves another source of food going now this is going to require logs stone and time we do have logs and we have stone but at the same time as while we build that we are going to need weapons so let's take a look in here and see if we have anything unlocked Ooh, we have flutes Let's get a couple of those going. Give some people to some uh, entertainment so that they enjoy themselves. But it looks like we have no weapons available. What do we need to unlock the simple bow? We need a butcher's block. Okay, so as soon as we're done the butcher's block, we'll be able to uh, unlock the simple bowl, and that will allow us to go through and start hunting animals. And there is our simple bow. We'll come in here, unlock two or automate two, like always. Oh, we got a snare kit in here. Let's get a couple going there as well. So we can now mine uh, and we can either mine mountains or we can start mining the mountains. If we take a look at the mountain here, we have a couple different options. We have the regular stone, which is going to give us large stones. And then we have these ones with veins running through it. This one here is going to be iron. If it's slightly red, it's iron. You'll also see gold through some of the deeper mountains and for example probably maybe this one might have gold in it or a couple of these you'll see that by a gold vein 
just like this, except for gold, of course. Now, one thing that we have been neglecting is clothing. So let's get that going. This is going to start unlocking some more stuff for us. And then while that's going on, I'm going to start building some more of our... Oh, place near rabbits to... Oh, this is going to automatically snare rabbits? Oh, right over here. Okay, let's do that. That is one of the new objects that came in. All right. Now it is time to finally do what we want to do. Earn some gold. Earn some coin. And how are we going to do that? We are going to do that by building an inn and creating a vacancy sign. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is now that we actually have a good floor, we are going to go in here and build ourselves a nice little building. And that's going to be our floor. And then around that, we are going to go into here and we have our log walls, which are flammable, or we have our rock walls, but it's going to require a lot of stone and we're already using a lot of stone. So what we're going to do is our log walls. We're going to go like that. And then, then we're going to come in here and build ourselves a... We have the option of a straw door, 10 and 10, and a gate or barn door. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our straw door, and we'll put that... Yeah, let's put it over here. And of course, we want windows, because we are actually going to put a roof on that, on this thing. So we'll put that there, there, and there. Get us some windows. And then we are going to look at a roof. What type of roofs can we put on here? We could do a hay roof, high flammability. Or we could put stone. That's going to require large rocks. We will do that. And we are going to need to mine a lot. So let's just go over here, mine this entire mountain. Just to be on the safe side, start the strip mining. Oh, they're making good progress already. Okay, do we... It doesn't look like... It doesn't say we're short on it anything but i suspect we will be because i'm not seeing a large stone up here so i think it's a bit of an issue that uh that we uh that i think that it's just missing there we go okay we need 164 logs so i did notice that we have the ability now to plant trees so we'll probably want to start doing that i also planted some bushes here and we have our new flax that we can do there. And let's go start doing the trees. Now, by having this harvesting here, they will automatically harvest those trees. But what's kind of cool about the way that they're doing this is because the planting doesn't require tilling, you could go here and let's say that we wanted trees on either side, right? We want to mirror that. Two trees over there, two trees over here. The window right there. There we do. There we have it, right? We can do that sort of thing right out of the gate. I really like the aesthetic part of that. I know we're rushing through things right now, but uh, for aesthetic, if you were going through and to do a playthrough, it would be really pleasing to go through and be able to design your trees right from the get-go. One thing to note is these clear trees and these jobs, as long as you have this here, you're going to, you still need them. So we're going to still need to continue cutting until this goes away. As you can see, it's taking into consideration the jobs that you have. So this is very interesting, very nice that you'll be able to see exactly what you need. Okay, there we go. It's gone. And as you can see, we need a ton of clay. Let's see, we should be able to gather clay over here again. We can gather clay even though we already had over there. It definitely respawns. Okay, and I will be back when we have everything harvested. Our inn is starting to take shape. So we're going to put up the vacancy sign. They aren't going to like us like our hotel until it's done. But let's get some cash in. And this will also help unlock the ability to bring in workers. Right now we have 220 tasks. It's going to take three to four days to complete this. So we want to so we want to increase the speed and the best way to do that is to actually bring in other workers but unfortunately we need it in first and we need gold or and we need coins the only way to get that is via the 
bringing in people to rent out your inn or via trading. We have our first guest. All right. So this is a critical aspect of the game is the ability to rent out a bed. It is critical for gaining currency and reputation from your neighbors. So we can click here to rent a bed or we can ask them to leave. Now, of course, we want to rent a bed for them and we can set the ability for them to go in and out of buildings. So we can go in here and say that they cannot, can or cannot go into this building. But we're going to let them in there and they will stay the night. And if they're satisfied, they will pay us the gold that they that we are owed. I also set up a trader post here and a job board. But we are just waiting on the large rocks to be delivered. Our our build our inn is actually coming along. And once it's done, we will have a pretty good inn for people to stay at. Now, unfortunately, our guest here decided to stay inside rather than outside so that is unfortunate once we go through and we build up more indoor uh sleeping quarters then we should be able to delete all these outdoor ones and prevent this from happening and on the in, inside the door you can set the door level for guest allowed uh raise lock level or or sorry by uh raise rock level. workers workers allowed Family only, family only level one, and family level two. And we're just going to put it on unlocked. But below, you can also do animals allowed. And that will be for when you're creating pens and, and such. Now, unfortunately, for us here, it looks like we may have a bit of an issue that uh, they aren't too happy. So we're going to have to wait to see if, how much to pay us if we get reputation or whatnot. And this is already set, so we're going to get that to the job board right away. We need to plow through these tasks. They are just taking forever without workers. Oh, we got some traders coming in. All right, so they are leaving, and it looks like they aren't too happy. Unfortunately, they paid 11, so it's better than nothing. But uh, 31 is not going to be enough for a day labor. And we're just waiting for them to get to this, uh, uh, to get here. Oh, we got one of them here. So let's see, what do they like? They would like chicken, some planks. I could provide planks. Yeah, let's uh, let's sell some planks. We'll give both of our, our entire supply. And then we're just waiting for the other two to get here. Also, their trading symbol will come up in the corner here. So you can bring it up and, uh, and be aware. What are we... Uh, oh, we're missing... Oh, just we need two planks. Okay, we're not missing anything. Okay, you. You are next. So they are selling. So we could buy a cow. Uh, or sorry, goat, a sow, and a sow. But they're both... But unfortunately, they aren't something that we can breed. And they are looking for hides. I can provide hides. Yeah, we can definitely provide hides. So let's do that. And let's bring our gold above... Our current currency above 100. And that way we're prepared for when uh, the day laborers show up. Another note, uh, as you go through the game, you will be able to create branches from logs. So the, this is something that you can automate. It looks like they have, in the latest patch, added a lot of automation from this. Even stuff like hunting, where you weren't able to automate before, you're able to automate via the snare trap. One thing to note is, at, as you play the game, you're, you're going to see this little water droplet here. Now, with the water droplet, you want to be careful because and any item that has that water droplet, you're going to want to move indoors and store that indoors because it is going to take a deteriorated damage from that water droplet, even if that is just moving it indoors to, say, a cave storage. All right. We got our second guest that came for the night. And as you can see, I moved all of our beds indoors and this forced them to go indoors to sleep. And because of that, we got an extra four of our coin from our rent. So we continue improving our in situation and the indoors, we're going to make more and more from that. And it looks like we have a day laborer. So we got a job seeker here. And once he comes here, we can hire them. At, these are going to be for different rates that you're going to be able to hire them. And 
that's going to speed up the available tasks for that day. Because right now, as you can see, we have currently two, four, six of our clan members that can do day work. So adding another, uh, another one is going to accelerate the amount of tasks that we can do in a single day. This was a really fun game to go through and play. And I think that this has some really good opportunity as it moves through early access to really bring a awesome colony sim game to the genre. Now, if you want to see more of this on this channel, go down and hit that like button. If I see over 100 likes within the first 24 hours, we will 100% do a playthrough of this game. I think this could be a very interesting game to explore in a slower, less rushed, less messy playthrough than what we had done today. But with that, I am going to say, have yourself a good morning, good day, or good evening wherever you are.